Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Vice Ozark textile jacket and trousers. This jacket and trouser combination from Vice is designed to give you the benefits of laminated waterproof kit for less than you'd pay for the pricey top end equivalents. If you're not sure what laminated kit is, it means the waterproof membrane for this Ozark combo is bonded to the polyester outer shell rather than sitting loosely inside it. So where on a traditional drop liner setup, the membrane protects you from water that's already soaked past the outer layer of the jacket, this doesn't let the outer layer saturate in the first place. Being bonded to the outer means it can help repel water at first contact, keeping your kit drier, lighter, and also giving you a better chance of staying warm. And in terms of price, at the time of recording this, you can get the jacket and the trousers for £550. With some of the premium laminated textile jackets, you'd only get the jacket for that money. Now, I'm not saying this is as good as that high-end kit, so bear with me while I run through the essential details and also my experience after about 600 road miles of wearing this jacket and trousers. The outer is made from 600 denier polyester, which gives a slightly shiny appearance in sunlight. Now, that's possibly one of the few areas where the relatively low price is evident. It's more expensive jackets tend to use nylon and that won't look shiny in the sun. There's no real difference in performance between the two materials, so this polyester and the nylon that's used in others, and this is tough enough for an overall CE protection rating of AA, which I'll go into in a bit more detail later on. The jacket fastens with a zip up the middle and then there's a storm flap over the top that secures with Velcro. It's one continuous band of Velcro, which did make it a bit tricky for me at first. A gap in the run of Velcro would make it easier, giving you somewhere to poke your finger when you're separating them, but actually I pretty quickly got used to it and found a way to work it out. The Velcro is good quality stuff as well. It feels like it will last well. And then there's a small extra panel of it as well at the bottom here, just to hold the bottom hem together. I prefer Velcro here rather than the popper that you get on quite a lot of other jackets. The collar secures with a press stud and it's adjustable to give you a closer or looser fit, which is a neat feature. And there's also a neoprene section around the top for a better seal against rain and wind. And that's actually reminiscent of quite expensive rucker jackets. The cuffs have simple Velcro and zipped closures and I found it easy enough to get winter gloves inside there. There's fit adjustment from poppers at the elbows. You get them above and below the elbows. And there are accordion stretch panels that run from the back of the shoulders to the armpits for flexibility. The last sections that allow adjustment on fit are pleats at the hips. So pulling the Velcro tab and opening the zip from the bottom gives you an extra section for more room at the waist. And this doubles up as a vent as well. So if you pull the zip puller down from the top, that opens up a vent. Two things you need to know about that pleat. First of all, there's nowhere to put the Velcro tab if you ride with the pleat open, and it would be nice to have somewhere to put it. Secondly, opening that pleat pulls the waterproof membrane apart. So there's a gap in the waterproofing. In wet weather, you'll need to remember to keep that pleat closed to keep out rain. The vents there make up a quarter of the vents on the jacket. You also get two at the chest, two at the biceps, and then there are two on the back as well. All of those separate the waterproof membrane. They make it come apart. That's great for airflow when it's too warm. And I could feel air flowing in through the jacket when those vents were open, but you do need to remember to close them again when it's raining. Finally, on the outside, there are three exterior pockets, two at the hips and then the customary one at the lower back. All three of those pockets have waterproof zips and I didn't have any trouble with the contents getting wet when I was riding in the rain. So moving towards the inside of the jacket, firstly, there's a Napoleon pocket just behind the main zip and then there are another pair of pockets in the thermal liner. That liner is a full sleeve liner and it's pretty warm. I rode in some cold conditions for a couple of hours at a time with just a base layer and a very thin thermal underneath and I stay comfortable all the time. Behind the thermal liner is the mesh lining that holds the armor. Usually you would find a pocket or two in that liner as well, but there aren't any here. So when the thermal liner is out, you've got just the one internal pocket. Anyway, moving on to armor, it's a full set. You get shoulders, elbows, and back. The shoulders and elbows meet the higher level two of the CE standard for impact protection, and the back insert meets the basic level one. Also in this liner is where we see the label for the overall CE rating. And as I said earlier, the Ozark jacket meets the middle level of three, which is double A. In terms of connecting to trousers, there's a short zip and also a loop that you can attach to your belt. I tested this jacket with the matching Ozark trousers, which you see here. The construction for those is very similar to the jacket with some more flexible material at the inner thigh and then tougher material where your legs come into contact with your bike. There are vents at the thighs and the knee and hip armor is approved to the higher CE level two, which is a definite plus. 
Now I found it a bit fiddly to zip the trousers to the jacket as the braces also zip to the back of the trousers. So it's a bit busy, you've got two zips, it's not always easy to locate the one that you actually need. My other issue was a lack of grippy panels on the seat of the trousers. If there had been some, I wouldn't have been sliding around on the bike seat quite so much as I was. So let's cover off sizing. The jacket ranges from 40 inches to 54 inches at the chest. I wore a 40. Some companies call 40 a medium, some call it a small. Vice call it a small. It's always worth checking the size charts before you buy as different brands have different ideas when it comes to that. A 40 is the size I would normally expect to wear and I found this one comfortable and flexible, especially thanks to those elasticated stretch panels under the arms. The trousers range from a 30 inch waist to a 44 inch. I wore a 32. Again, that's exactly what I would normally take and they were fine for me. There's a choice of short or regular length. Short is 29 inch and regular is 32. And that's what I went for. Still think they came up a bit short on me in the riding position. So that's worth bearing in mind, especially if you normally wear trousers with a longer inside leg. In terms of price, the jacket is $289.99 as we record this and the trousers are $259.99. So that means the two together cost £550, which is good value for a laminated setup. Overall then, I think the Vice Ozark is a decent combo. I found it comfortable, well made, and it kept me dry in some heavy rain and also warm when it was cold. It dried out pretty quickly after a soaking as well, which is where that laminated outer construction comes in handy. The vents work, but they're quite small, so it's not a particularly well-vented jacket. After getting wet, it didn't dry out quite as quickly as the best laminated Gore-Tex jackets, but it costs about a third of the price, and I wouldn't say those top-end jackets are three times better. There are other laminated jackets in this price category as well. The Oxford Mondial is very popular, and the Wolf Fortitude is worth a look while there are still some of those about as well. But this is a welcome addition to the fold with good performance for a good price. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Vice Ozark textile jacket and jeans. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.